brilliant. Yeah. Right. So, uh, summer 2012, F1. Um, for each of the last five years, the number of tourists X thousand visiting. Let's just be aware of this. That X thousand visiting Sacton and the average weekly sales in, again, we're dealing in thousands of pounds, in Sacton stores were noted. The table shows the results. Calculate the product moment correlation coefficient R between X and Y. Right, we remember when we're doing this, there are, what, there are six key things that we need to know. And often the questions give us the six key things, but this one hasn't. So we're going to have to work them out. The th what are the six key things that we need to know to do our regression correlation type things? Can we remember them? The six bits of information. Sigma x squared it is, isn't it? It's the sum of all of them. So we've got sigma x and sigma x squared. Sigma y, sigma y squared. Good. Sigma x, y, and n. That's the other one, isn't it? So they are the six key things that we're going to need to work out for this. Have I got the calculator? Yes. Rubbish Aurora AX595TV. So uh, we work this all out. So we add together the X values. It is slightly unusual for them not to give us these already. But um, there we are. 1366 squared. 17.6. Oh, well done. And then sigma x squared is 37.4466. I've already done this. <laughs> Which is a nice. 37. 4466. Sigma y squared? Um, 62.82. Sigma x y? 855.46. 0.6. Yes. And n is of course 5, so it is 5 values. So there we go, we've got the 6 key values, and, and they weren't given to you, so you would have to work each of those out. Remember, sigma xy is 250 times 4.2 plus 270 times 3.7, and so on for those 5 values. There's only 5 of them, so it's not that big a deal to work it out. Right, so once we've got those 6 key things, we need to know <coughs> the, the sxy you know, the, the text abbreviation stuff. Thanks, James. So we need to know SXY, SXX, and SYY, which are on your formula sheet. But I'm going to write out the formulas. This is, remember, this one is sigma XY minus sigma X, sigma Y over N. This is sigma X squared minus sigma X when you square it over N. And this is sigma Y squared. Take away sigma Y when we square it over n, so we can work these out, because we've got all the numbers that we need for this, so that is 8554.6, take away 1366 times 374460, over 5, I'm feeling that I need to read these over Yeah? One of the things I can't do is wrong. Aha! Uh -huh. Which one? Um, You're not going to tell me. XY. Sigma XY is what? Um, 3884.8. I oh, just put in a different number for one Spectacularly wrong. Yeah. What was it? 3884.8. Eight, eight, oh, wait, no, that's wrong too. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're, doing, really check these, you're doing a great job with this, right? It's 4784.8. Yeah, I got that. <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm going to do these myself. Okay. So we, uh, we work out that value and we put it into our calculator and we're going to store it in a memory so that we can use it. Shouldn't that be 17.6, not 37.4.6? It should. <laughs> was that, was that Hayley redeeming herself yeah. for the earlier mistakes? Mm -hmm. Right. Everyone makes mistakes. Oh, oof. Everyone makes mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm not so much. 
I've, I've just got minus 588 over 25. Or minus 23.52. Now remember, we talked about this last time, didn't we? We're gonna, I'm going to store this in my calculator memory. So I'm going to have that as the answer and do shift RC <coughs> and then put that in memory A. And I'm going to make a little note to myself that I stored that in memory A. And then I'm going to do the same for the other things as well. So sigma x squared. Oh, I'm now in green. Boop. Minus 1366 squared of 5. And this one. Gives me 1268.8. And I'm going to store that one in memory B. So shift store B. And then the last one is 62.82 minus 17.6 squared over 5 gives us 2, uh, 0.868 which I am going to store in memory C so that I've got all of those um, ready to use and then we're going to work out R and again we're just referring to the formula sheet here R is SXY over the square root of SXX SYY. So we have that one, minus 23.52 over root 1268.8 times 0.868. But because I stored all those in the memories of my calculator, I can just do the calculation alpha A over root alpha B alpha c. And it gives me, oh, minus 0 0.709. We have a negative coefficient, um, a correlation coefficient. We're going to check, does that feel like that was the right answer based on what we had here? As, as x goes up generally across there, y is going down. So yeah, it looks like a that feels like a reasonable value that we've got. <coughs> OK. We've found the product normal co correlation coefficient. It is required to estimate the average weekly sales at sack, sack ton stores in a year when the number of tourists is 280,000. Calculate the equation of an appropriate regression line. First question is, which regression line do we want? Is it x on y or y on x? Well, um, we're trying to calculate... We're trying to calculate x, that's the weekly sales, no, hang on, that's y. We're trying to calculate y, the weekly sales, based on x. So as we read it through, we're getting in our head which line it is. The appropriate one is the y on x regression line, which is good news, because that's the one that we used to calculate, and that's the one that we calculate the most. We return to the formula sheet where we're told that the y on x regression line is y equals a plus bx, where b is sxy over sxx, and a is y <coughs> minus bx bar. And we've already done a lot of the work for this, Richard. You always say what doesn't look what doesn't look what doesn't. So Yes, so all of this is in the formula booklet. Is that what you mean? Mm. Yeah. So should we, should we mark the things with the little smiley face? So, so far in this question, those three things and <coughs> that formula there have all been in the formula booklet. And, in fact, all of that lot is in the formula booklet as well. If it, if it had been the appropriate one, it had been the x on y, X and Y isn't on the formula booklet, but all you do is you write the same thing and just swap X and Y around everywhere. Wherever you see X, you write Y, and vice versa if you're doing the other one. Okay, so it's, it's, all, it's all been there for us so far. So we can work these out because we've already done the right calculations. So B is SXY over SXX, which was, was that 1, 2, 6, 8, 8? 
But again, on my calculator, I've got these stored. That was a good idea, wasn't it? So I've got alpha A and alpha B. That's the order that did them. And I get, well, we'll do this to three significant figures. It's, I mean, there is a fraction there, but it's minus 0.0185 to three significant figures. And now I'm working out A as well. A is y bar. Now, y bar, that's the mean of y. So that's sigma y, which, again, we worked out as part of our six key things. 17.6 over n, so over 5. Take away b. times x bar, and x bar is sigma x, 1366 over 5. Now actually, just thinking about this, I'm going to use this value a few times, aren't I? So I'm going to store that value in my calculator as well, make use of all of these memories that we've got. I'm storing that in memory D, so I can use it in here. So I've got, right, let's work this out, 17.6 over 5, take away memory D times 1366 out of 5 and I get 8.58 as my value of A. Again, to three significant figures. So my equation, my regression line, is Y equals A plus B times X. That's, that's the value that I've got. And actually, because I've <coughs> been doing it all the way along, I'm going to store that 8.58, that number, in memory E, just so that I can use that as well. Um, we're not finished, are we? The question said, find the sales when there are 280,000 tourists. Now, remember, we highlighted it because it was a sensible thing to do, but this is X thousands is the number of tourists. So it's not 280,000 that we're going to sub in, it's 280, because it's 280,000. So x equals 280. We are doing y is 8.58 times 0.0185 times 280, 20. And that gives us <coughs> Three point three nine. Now I, I've used the exact figures that I stored in my calculator. If you did it without them, you'd get three point four, I think. It's three point three nine three nine four seven. So three point three nine. Now that's not my answer either, is it? Remember what we highlighted in the question right at the beginning of all of this? We highlighted that bit as well. Y thousands. So a Y figure of 4.2 means 4.2 thousand pounds. So the answer actually is 3,390 pounds. Somebody has a rocket powered vibration alert on their phone. Um, okay, the last part of the question <coughs> said over a longer period, the value of R is minus 0.8. The mayor says, This shows that having more tourists causes sales at Sexton stores to decrease. That was the mayor's voice. Give a reason why this statement is not correct. Hayley? Um, Colonization doesn't need causation. That's, that's the one, isn't it? It was our little joke that we had on the, on the Facebook page, our thing, that we know all about that, don't we? We've talked about this a lot, and that's all that they want as our answer to this. Correlation does not imply causation. Or equivalent <coughs> to that. Just because we get a negative correlation, that doesn't mean that one thing caused the other to go down. It just means that they, there is a correlation. They both go down at the same time. Okay? Remember that whole thing about 
TV sets and road accidents or whatever it might be. Yes? How many marks is the question? The whole question? It was quite a lot of marks. It was a, a bit of a weighty first question. Nine marks in total. But just one mark for that final bit. Um, yeah. that's, that's a bit of a monster, isn't it? For the first question to be nine marks straight in there um, with that one. It, it was quite a, quite a heavy start to the paper, as I said. Okay, but we're done. And that's maths. <laughs>